Now as we take a look at this one, we're going to see if we can find the results one for us. It's a little bit different, it's still in 3D, it's just that we're not centered in the origin, but that's okay because we get to pretend the origin someplace else. Also, it doesn't give us the actual angles, it just gives us some like positioning thingies, which is okay because we can handle this. So we're going to always start with the simplest one. The simplest one would be this guy, and we like him because he is just straight down, zero, zero, negative 50. Done! Happy! Amazing! Alright, now let's work on this guy here. We're going to call him F2. F2 starts at some random point A, goes to some other random point B. The only way to figure out how this looks in 3D is to do a position vector. Now let's pretend that you're like an active learner and stuff, and you're going to pause the video and see how far you can get without you know, watching. All right, we'll pretend that happened. Anyway, that's actually the best way to learn. That's why I keep trying to remind you to do it. Whenever we want to come up with the position vector, we say, okay, well, there's going to be three ways to get there. Or three ways to get there, but three things I have to do. If I start at A, I'm going to go back this way, backwards along the y-axis for six. Then I'm going to go backwards along the x-axis for four. And then I'm going to go up along the z-axis for, oh, sorry, three and then 4. Now, in order to turn this into a unit vector, I need to find its magnitude. So the magnitude of AB is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares, or 9, 36, and 4, which is just, wait, 16. So since apparently I can't do math right now, let's put this in. So I have negative 3, negative 6, and 4. And I want to square root my dot product of that with itself. Square root of 61. Beautiful. So that means that the unit vector from A to B is just negative 3 over root 61, negative 6 over root 61, and 4 over root 61. Which then obviously, that's the word obviously, obviously means that F2 is equal to 20 times, we'll just say times the unit vector AB. So I can come in here to my calculator and I've got 20 times the original thingy divided by its magnitude and I'm going to say give me an exact answer and it's going to come back with this. So I've got 768, 15, 4, some other number 10.2 beautiful now if you haven't already again pause the video try to do the other one because it can't be that bad because you just did the other one that's just like it so we'll pretend that happened and let's look at r from a to some other c now again we are going backwards along the y in fact, everything else is going to be pretty much the same. We're going backwards along the y, but now we're going forward along the x. I know it's forward because that's the same direction as the letter x. That's always the positive direction. And then I'm going to go up 4 to get there. And since we have 3, 6, and 4, that means the magnitude is still square root of 61. So that means the force is going to be 5 pounds times the unit vector AC. Of course, the unit vector AC is itself over its magnitude. So now I have, actually, whatever you were, I have 5 times the unit vector, or the regular thingy, 3, negative 6, and 4, and that's again going to be divided by the 61. Oops, I did it twice. I got excited. Alright, so then we have 1.92384, And some other number, 2.56. That looks amazing. All right. Now if I add all these together, that will give me my result in force. And I expect that in real life what's going to happen to this thing, because it's getting pulled down a lot further than it's getting pulled up. So it's probably going to be down a whole lot and back this way. So I'm expecting some kind of a resultant vector going in that direction. Let's see what I get. So I'm going to add my 0, 0, negative 50 to my first guy and my second guy. So I have 576 
and 19.2 and 37.2 and that kind of makes sense because it's basically pulling it back and uh, and exactly where I thought it was now if I want a magnitude which will be helpful whenever I'm looking at doing the SolidWorks the magnitude is going to be the square root of the dot product of the force with itself so a magnitude of about 42.3 so that's what I need to be looking for when I go do this in SolidWorks so now let's draw this in SOLIDWORKS. We'll start with a new part. Part! Yay! And we're going to set our units to IPS. Boop! Ba-doop! Amazing. Alright, now let's start with something on the top plane for no particular reason. But we're going to draw it. Now, I'm going to actually make everything a size of 10 this time instead of um, whatever I've been using, 1s. And that's because I have threes, fours, and sixes, so it's just going to make the dimensions just look better. It's a completely arbitrary decision. I could scale everything else by a tenth, but just to make it a little bit easier, I'll just make all of these ten. You'll thank me later. Extruded boss base of ten. Beautiful. Okay. Perfect. Now, we actually, this time we have stuff going backwards, so I'm going to, just to help things be a little bit better, I'm going to put my reference geometry on the back. And this is going to be my force plane. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do a sketch normal to this. Create a sketch. I'm drawing this line straight down, so it's yellow, got that perpendicular -y looking thing. And I'm going to arbitrarily call this some distance. It doesn't matter what. I just, I'm going to make sure it really doesn't matter what. It doesn't have to be half of what we have. It can just be whatever. Okay. So good. That is going to be our 50 pound force line. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to hide this guy because I don't want to see him for a while. All right. Now, the next thing that I got to do is I got to figure out how am I going to draw in this box? And you're like, what box? I'm like, this box. Okay. So, we have here, we'll go ahead and do force 2 first, but we have this 3, 4, which really makes a box here, 3 and a 4, and then it comes out this way, and it's a 3 and a 4 again, like this, and we have this box. So I'm connecting these lines because it'll be easier for me to delete later, um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to create some version of that rectangle in SolidWorks, and to do that we're going to start off by creating some version of this um, little rectangly thing here. We have to make sure we have the dimensions good on it. So if we look, we see across along the bottom, this is three, and across along the side, this is four. So if we're looking at it from one direction or another, we'll see that the top is gonna be three, and the bottom, or the top is gonna be three, and the side is gonna be four. So we're gonna keep that in mind whenever we come over to SolidWorks. So basically, I'm gonna add a new sketch here and force point this way to oops I missed it there we go all right and it is three on the top and it is four on the side beautiful okay now this is going to be a little weird but basically we can't like create more geometry like if we get more geometry we can't create a part so what i would love to do is just extrude that out six and then move on with my day but the problem is if i do that i'm actually adding more material to the system which is going to complicate the physics so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to add a plane i'm going to click this one and i'm going to say i want a plane that is six inches out okay beautiful so i have six inches out all right now this is going to be weird so right click that plane go normal too so just kind of lines up and now what i'm going to say is I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. So right-click, create a sketch. Now I want the same sketch that I already have, so to do that, I'm gonna right-click, I'm gonna say Select Chain, and then I'm gonna come over here to this thing that says Convert Entities. Now what that's done is it's taken that other sketch and it's pushed it onto this sketch as well. It just recreated it. Good? Now whenever you see this, now you see I have that uh, rectangle-y thingy on both. Now what I'm interested in, of course, is a force that goes from this corner down here, the force point, up to here. So what I can do is I can create an axis. 
So I'm going to create an axis that goes from force point up to that, and there we go. Now that's the axis whereby I'm going to have my lovely little um, thingy, force thingy. All right, so this is going to be my 20 pound force. And I'm going to call this an axis because it's not an actual line, it's just an axis. So this is actually going to be a little weird in a minute, but that's okay. So to simplify things, I'm going to hide this other stuff. There we go. So that's going to be hidden because I'm going to do the other one. Now this plane is actually in the right place because the other one was also six inches away. Now, do I have to, I mean, create a, uh, theoretically I could create another plane that's also six inches away, but I like this one. But I will come over here and I'm gonna hide it for a second. Just for consistency, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw another sketch on this guy. So normal two, create a sketch. And this one is going to go from the, oh, that stupid points in the way. Um, let me go ahead and hide that axis as well. Now everything's hidden. Now I'm going to create a sketch that's going to go from the force point over here and smart to mention it, the three is on the top and the four is on the side. We're just doing this mostly so you can get experience. All right. Now I want to show that plane again. Now, if I do a sketch, a new sketch on that plane, I want to click here, right click, select the chain, and convert the entities again. All right, now I've got a nice little sketch there. All right, now my other axis, I should be doing a better job of naming these, but I'm getting kind of tired. So <laughs> my axis is gonna go from the force point up to the sky over here. Now I'm actually gonna name this one so I can see it later. This is my five pound axis which is phenomenal. And I can hide everything else because I super duper don't want to see it. Hide, but I do want to see my 50 pound line. And I want to see, so I want to see, there we go, my two axes and my line. I don't want to see the plane. Beautiful. So those are the three forces that I'm going to create and I see them there. All right, now I'm going to create a study. And actually, unfortunately, for some reason, SolidWorks is too stupid to know that I'm in IPS in the model, so I must want to be in IPS here. So I've got to change the options to IPS. Okay, well, yours probably says this. I think we're going to have to change this every time. But anyway, you just want to make sure you're in the right unit system here. Okay, now I want to add forces. So the first one is pretty straightforward. We want to create a force starting at our force point. Force point, oh gosh, these are all labeled on top of each other. So force point... Come on, there we go. And it's going to go along the 50 pound line. So that's beautiful. It's clearly facing the wrong direction. So I'm gonna change the direction, make it 50 pounds and be super happy with life. Okay. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create another force. <laughs> I'm gonna create another force starting along the selected direction, starting at the force point going along the 20 pound axis. Alrighty, so you can see it's actually going the right direction for once. Now there's a couple of options here. Make sure you've selected this one here that's axial. Because we have an axis, we have different kinds of options. We don't want them. We only want the axial one because that's why we made the whole stupid axis is to go along it. So 20 pounds there. And then one more force starting at or select a direction starting at the force point going along now the five pound axis and we want to make sure it's five pounds and is it going the right direction i can't tell oh here i don't know this is hard to see so i'm actually going to cancel out of this and i'm going to come over here and i'm going to hide the box then maybe i'll be able to see what's going on a little bit better okay now Add a force, starting at the force point and going along, select a direction, starting at force point, going along the five pound axis. Okay, now I can see ah, it is going the right direction. That's nice, because that's the pink one, five pound axis. Five pound axis, because that's, yeah, if I reverse it, yes, that's the right direction I want to go. Okay. So now I can see those three forces. This is actually kind of a cute little view without that stupid box in the way. 
um, you can see they're going down, they're going out, and they're going out. I do need to see the box again now, so I'm going to show the box, and I'm going to fix the back of the box so it can't move, and it's perfect. And I'm going to have to apply a material, I don't care what it is, and I'm going to run the study. Alrighty, now let's look at the results. Remember that if you don't see free body force as an option, you need to go here to static, right click, properties, and make sure it says compute free body forces on there. Alrighty, so back to this. List result force, free body force, starting at the force point in that plane. And there we go. Okay. So these aren't in the right positions, and that's okay because our coordinate system is just a little bit messed up based on how we set things up. But we have 5, 7, 6, 3, 7, 2, and 19. So we have we have the same numbers you see here. Uh, this, this, and this. We have the same numbers here. The magnitude, we have 42.3. They have 42.2, which really isn't a big deal because if I look at 42.3 is what I got. So that's the true answer. And then we divide by 42.3, because that's the true answer. Um, well, the true answer is actually, I really want to be crazy about it, I could go get that. But anyway, um, we have less than a 2%, well, we actually have a 0.2% error. So a 0.2% error is 100% fine. So we're really not worried about the fact that this number isn't quite right. What we were able to do is we were able to model what we needed get an answer that was super duper close. The, the axes themselves are often like, well, one of them's negative. Well, that's just because we drew it funny. But what we're really looking at is the magnitude because that's, that's really what we're, what we're focused on. Um, and if we, we translated the different axes to match what we have in the picture, then we'll be just perfectly fine. Um, and so this is kind of cool. We got precisely what we're looking for and we're in good shape.